Okay, we're going to spill the secrets on how we grew to 140,000 subscribers here on YouTube. We're going to go through everything, including all of the equipment we use, how we set up our studio, the tools we use to rank on YouTube and how you can rank on YouTube, the things we've done right, the things we've done wrong, and loads of beginner tips if you're thinking of starting out on YouTube for the first time. This is going to be a really long, in-depth video, so join us for the ride. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys. Now, before we jump in, I have timestamped this video. So if I'm talking about something you feel you already know everything about, you can skip through the video to other chapters. But I would recommend that you watch it all the way through as we're gonna be sprinkling little tips all the way throughout this video. So let's get into it. Okay, so we thought we'd show you a bit behind the scenes at what we use here at Editor's Keys. So the main camera we use is the Sony A7S III which is what we're filming on right now. And this is just such a fantastic camera. Now it is a bit of an expensive camera. I think if you're starting out in YouTube, I wouldn't recommend this, but we went for this camera. It's about three and a half thousand pounds here in the UK, but we do a lot of product photography, product videos, adverts, things like that. So we've really got our money out of this. And this is the main camera that we use for all of the videos you'll have seen on the channel. We also use an A6400. But these are some extra cameras that we tend to use a lot in videos. So this is an iPhone 13 Pro. And you'd be surprised how many times we've used this on the channel and we mix it in with the Sony A7S III video and people can't even tell. The iPhone is getting so good these days and you can even add ND filters and other things to this. It's just a great camera. You can take this in your pocket, you can vlog with it, you can add external microphones, and it really is a fantastic um, camera. So if you're looking for a really good camera, start with something like the iPhone. The next camera I have here, this is the DJI Pocket 2. Now, I don't use this for every video. Uh, we tend to use this more, to be honest, if we're vlogging, if we're doing a bit of travel vlogging, if we're going to a trade show. This is just a great little one inch sensor on a gimbal, as you can see there, the gimbal acts great. So instead of taking a huge camera with you like a Sony A7S III and a gimbal like these bad boys, these things are absolutely massive. I mean, look at this. This camera fits in my hand and it's got a gimbal on. To get the Sony A7S III in something similar, that's what you're looking at. Now, of course, the picture quality isn't quite the same coming out of these two, but you'd be surprised how good the image quality is out of this DJI Pocket 2. I'll put some shots in here now so you can see the image quality that comes out of this camera. Now, next up for lighting, this is the editor's key set you will have seen on loads of our videos. And at the back here, we just have a few practical lights. This is a little cinematic editor's key sign we've got here. We've got a little dust, quite dusty bulb, actually, I should polish that. A dusty bulb here, and we've got some little uh, fairy lights inside the head and down the side. On the wall, we've got the Dream Big sign, which uh, you'll have seen in almost every video. And as I say, these are just practical lights that add a bit of kind of dimension to the uh, to the videos. The main studio lights we have are these. These are newer fill light boxes. We just have two of these, um, and they work pretty well. We originally got them t as a temporary measure. They're about forty pounds on Amazon, and they've been so good that we've just kept them. Actually, we haven't up we haven't upgraded them at all. So we've got two of those. We've got one over here as well, and then uh, if we go over to the table. This is now the buckle and band set that we use for uh, buckle and band. We've got two LED lights that we sometimes pop on top of a camera. These are really, really good. They just kind of are battery powered. So if you need uh, some lights on the go, they're really handy. This one has hundreds of different colors, but just a handy way to, to light if you're in a dark scenario. But also if you are filming videos, you can use them to kind of get lighting effects over things like products, especially if you're doing like tech reviews. So it's definitely worth having one of these in your bag, ready to go. So I'm just gonna turn this off here, and then uh, let's take a look at the buckle and band lighting. We've got a, um, actually a handheld strip light here. This can, this can actually change color. And if you can see that, this can actually change color, so it's quite handy. It's actually a handheld light that we've put onto a tripod. But again, this is really good for video shoots, um, if you're out and about, it's got a rechargeable battery in it, you can wave it around, it does a fantastic job. Uh, and then we've come over to the buckle and band set. We've, again, more practical lights, fairy lights, a bit more minimalistic compared to the editor's key set. Apart from this little uh, bad boy here, this is just like a LED 
strip light, I guess you would call it, it changes color. You can go up to 180 different colors, controlled by remote as well. So again, just adds a nice dimension, adds some nice colors to your videos. As you can see, the reflections on me there looks pretty damn cool. Now, of course, if you're setting up for the first time in YouTube, you don't really need most of these things. I would recommend just getting, <clears throat> just getting the newer fill lights or a, or a couple of studio lights, and maybe just one or two things like this. You can pick this up off Amazon for five pounds. I think it was five pounds. And you can just add this in the background and it just acts as a practical light. It just gives a bit of depth between the subject and, and the background. So if you're starting out, a couple of studio lights, a couple of practical lights are all you need to get started on YouTube. So if you're starting out, what do I recommend? Well, I would just get a couple of these lights if you do have a studio set up. They cost about 40 pounds, so they're super cheap. Um, and I would film on your iPhone, honestly. I mean, I know we've got a 3,000 pound camera, but this can film some seriously good footage and we do use it today. Even though we've got this camera here, we use this one a lot. So you can just get this, pop it on a tripod, plug in a microphone, get yourself a studio light, and honestly, you've got a YouTube setup right there. And it means as well, if you start YouTubing and you just realize you don't enjoy YouTubing or making videos, you haven't wasted a ton of money. You've just got a pair of lights. You've already got your iPhone, so it's the best way to start. Okay, so we've got all this lovely equipment and we've got loads of subscribers, but has it been an easy ride? No, we have made a ton of mistakes throughout our YouTube journey, and I wanted to share that with you first so you can learn from our mistakes and grow even faster than we did. So essentially, YouTube has some really great and quite negative factors about its algorithm. Now, what's great is that there's an audience available for everyone. So if you wanted to do a YouTube channel about socks, you could do that and there would be an audience there for you 100%. Now, YouTube rewards you if you keep doing videos about that subject. It will recommend your video to other people. What will happen is, let's just say you're a tech reviewer and you're doing iPhone reviews, and everything you do is about an iPhone, it's going to look for other people that like iPhone videos, it's gonna see that your videos are getting viewed and it's gonna share it out to those people. So you start building this fantastic audience of iPhone lovers or people who like socks, for example. Now, the big mistake most people do, and this is what we did, is doing videos about lots of different topics. So let me take you back to when we started our YouTube journey. Um, I run a business called Editor's Keys and we make products for audio people, video people, filmmakers, graphic designers, and gamers, okay? So that gave me loads and loads and loads of topics that we could do videos about. I thought, this is fantastic. We're never gonna run out of video ideas. The problem was, was that we did videos about everything. And that meant that when we did a video, let's say about Final Cut, which is a video editing program that you may know, we did two or three videos about Final Cut, and then when we uploaded a video about Avid Pro Tools, which is an audio editing program, that video goes out to all of the people who have subscribed, and all the people who have subscribed are Final Cut users. So you can see they're gonna switch off straight away because it's not for their program. When we did vlogs, I would do a vlog about a new phone I've got. People didn't come to the Editor's Keys channel for phone reviews, they came for video editing tips. So again, we would just be losing subscribers or we would be getting no views. And this is a big mistake people make. They think people are there to watch the presenter and they're really not, they're not here for me, they're here for the content. Same with your channel. So what I would advise you to do is stay in your lane, come up with a topic, stay in that niche and you will be rewarded. If you veer off too much, you will be, well, the opposite of rewarded. You will be kind of declined. YouTube will say, no, this viewer didn't watch this, so we're not gonna recommend it to this group of people. At this next video came out, again, its view count was low. We're not gonna recommend it to this people. If you get each video doing better than the next, better than the last one, you're gonna be shared out to more and more people. So learn from that huge mistake. So you've got your camera, you've got your lights, and you're ready to go. But now you need to come up with some ideas for videos. So how do we do it? What tools do we use? I'm gonna show you what tool we use, and there's a really good one we've been using recently. But what I would recommend if you're starting out is, especially if you're a, if you're a brand, let's say you're doing videos for a business, first of all, think about what questions your customer has. Uh, you can write those down, ask your customer service team if you've got those, and they could be a great start at creating some content for your YouTube channel. If you're a personal YouTuber, if you're a travel vlogger, if you're a tech reviewer, 
Think about the questions you had when you first started getting into the tech space. And it can be things that are really simple. So it could be, you know, how to film on an iPhone, how to connect this thing to an iPhone, how to transfer photos. You know, think of all the things that when you first got into tech yourself, for example, what things did you struggle with? They could be really good content ideas. The next thing is to think of YouTube the right way around. A lot of people think of YouTube as just a video platform like Netflix, and it's really different. It couldn't be any further from the truth. YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world. It's a search engine. People have a question and they put it into YouTube and they want the answer. So think of it more like that. You're not making short films, uh, you know, you, you can do and that can work, but really you're, you're coming up with answers for people's questions. So think about the questions that you can answer and that can be a great way of creating topics for YouTube. The next thing is to actually use YouTube. Use the search bar, start typing in iPhone how to and then look at the autocompletes below that or your subject if you're into makeup if you're into fashion type in something related to fashion how to see what comes up that could be a great idea for some topics because they are what people are actually searching for now let's jump into the tool we use to actually rank and come up with some really great content ideas and tags. Now, we're not actually experts when it comes to ranking on YouTube, so there is a secret tool that we use, which is called VidIQ, and this tool is pretty amazing. It can help you come up with ideas, it can help you improve your titles through AI, and it can help improve your tags. So, let me show you how this works. So, we are now logged into VidIQ, and this is the main website, and I come here if I want to kind of stay focused on the channel, and let give you a little tour this is actually behind the scenes of the editors keys youtube channel so on the left here you've got channel stats at the top we've got ai title recommendations keyword opportunities subscribers overview uh, competitors now these aren't really competitors these are actually friends in the industry that i've put in here just for a, a bit of fun so you can check that out top videos from our channel and some other things so how does this work so essentially the channel stats on the left here gives you um, various different time periods so you can see in a in a sort of instant really um, how many views you've got we're up five percent 42,000 views we've got over a thousand subscribers in the last seven days watch times down 29% so that's something we need to work on retention is 34% and estimated revenue in the last seven days which is actually down so you've got this um, AI title recommendations this is just super handy if you want to get some title ideas so let's just say we were doing a Premiere Pro update video let me type that in you could type that in and click get title ideas and this is going to give you AI recommended titles titles that may just click with the viewers better than titles you can come up with so as you can see some of them are a little bit out of date here Premiere Pro 2018 but what it's essentially doing is just giving you a way of improving your titles making them more readable um, looking at other videos with similar titles and tags that have got clicks so that's a good way you can get recommendations there so one of the biggest problems as a creator is coming up with fresh new ideas all of the time. So vidIQ has this great feature called Daily Ideas. Now we don't use it all the time, but it is a great AI feature that helps you come up with ideas that you may not have thought before. Now if we go across here to the Daily Ideas, I really like this area. Now we don't use it every single day, but it gives you great ideas for content based on what your viewers are viewing and based on your current uh, YouTube content. So you can see here we've got the ultimate Adobe editing tool, how to get a real blurry background from your webcam, 16 Premiere Pro keyboard shortcut hacks to edit faster, Final Cut Pro X tutorial, how to get started in 2022. So essentially, if you want to save some of these, you just come over and click the little heart icon. So we do a lot of keyboard videos, so I'm going to save that in there. And of course, not all of these will be perfect for your channel. And you will, of course, want to edit some of these titles. So it's just a great way if you're, you know, if you're stuck thinking about what content you can do the following month. This is just a great way to come and get some ideas. All your saved ideas from this will be put into one file here. So we have all of these possible titles here. And again, this is looking at data from our channel, data from our viewers, and is giving us a prediction of how well these videos could potentially do. Now, of course, this is an estimate, but it's actually a very, very good way of working out what your next video could be. And even though we don't use it for every video, it actually gives us a lot of inspiration. So I really like this feature. 
At the top here, we've got keywords. So you have an overview. This is the top keyword opportunities. So videos that we could do content about with these keywords are potentially going to do pretty well on the Edits Keys channel because we do a lot of video editing, tutorials, Final Cut, Premiere. As you can see, the Premiere Pro keyword is really good for us and this would be different for you. You can see the top search terms for our channel. Uh, so Masking in Premiere Pro is one of our top keywords. Weirdly, the Huawei Mate View, which is just a video we did of a new monitor in the um, Editor's Keys office, that one is doing really, really well. So we could do some more content on that Mate View monitor because people are searching and finding us through that keyword. You also get down here, rising keywords. Now, this is um, throughout the whole of YouTube, really. So, of course, a lot of the time, if I click view or rising keywords, you're not going to see potentially any any keywords that are great for your channel. So, but what I do is I, I come back to this list once a week and I look through it and occasionally I will find a keyword that is perfect for our channel. And it just means that it's looking at live data. It's looking at what people are actually searching for. So it can really help you come up with ideas. Next, in competitors. Now, as I said, I've put some of our friends in here. We've got Think Media, we've got uh, Ryan Nagel, we've got Premier Gal, we've got Jevon Dovey, Pixel Film Studios, and Moment, just some of our friends in the industry. And I've put these here because I thought they, they wouldn't mind us putting them in here. And as you can see, Jevon Dovey is absolutely smashing it. Look at that. 1.5 million views in the last 30 days. So Jevon's absolutely smashing it. Check out his channel. Um, but it just gives you um, all of your data against who against your competitors or your peers or your friends but it's a great way of just seeing how everyone else in the industry or all your niche is doing so it's just a great way to see if you're maybe doing the right thing maybe you're doing the, the wrong thing um, I don't look at this too much really we don't have really too many competitors but I just sometimes like to keep sort of tabs on what our friends are up to you know um, you know we love for example Jevon and Pre uh, Premier Girls channels so it's good to see that they're progressing. It's really, really nice. And it helps me keep up, keep up with some of their, their content as well. So that's really good there. Subscribers, let's go over to this. This gives you uh, a bit of indication uh, of a few areas. Now, the main one I use is this best times to post because it's exactly how it sounds. This will give you the best times to post on your channel. I'll go into that in a bit more detail later on. We've got the top channels your subscribers are subscribing to. So. Our channel is a little bit mixed in our niche, but you may find you you can get some either inspiration or you can do some collabs with people um, that are also in your industry because other people who follow you are following and subscribing to these people. And also top videos watched by our subscribers. Also worth a little look there. We've got then got SEO tools here. So these are bulk SEO tools and it actually recommends tags to put into some of our past videos. So I'll go into detail a bit more um, when we go to the YouTube section. Uh, then we've got My Coach, where you get a lot of tips and things here. And uh, you can upgrade to different kind of platforms. Now, as I mentioned, there's a free version of vidIQ. So you can do a lot of this with the free version. You might be limited to maybe 10 titles or three or four keywords. But if you're getting started out, just download it. I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, so that's how vidIQ works from its main website, but it's actually really well integrated into YouTube as well. So let me show you that. You'll see loads of extra features come up when you go to your main YouTube Creator Studio. So a few things happen. This is the, the, the YouTube homepage for me. Um, so we can see our friends here at Think Media. I've um, got the Everyday Dad there. And what you'll notice is next to these videos, you get this little blue icon pop up and it says 95 VPH. So what does VPH mean? Well, that means views per hour. So essentially what you can do is you can scroll through your homepage and you can see what of your friends or competitors videos are actually doing really, really well. How many views are they getting per hour? Also great as a research tool as well. So be sure to check that out. You, have, you do have a little shortcut up here to uh, kind of the main website tips and it will keep you within your YouTube Creator Studio. And this is how I prefer to use it. So if we go into our YouTube Creator Studio, um, down the left hand side here, you get quick links to things like your daily ideas. It's like a, a mini version of the full website that I showed you. There are a few extra things in here like channel audits, uh, which I really like. This will show you your views per month, your subscribers, and your minutes watched. Now these are all green, which is pretty good. Uh, you wanna keep everything going up and progressing and vidIQ is definitely helping us with this. Um, and where it gives you tips here is it shows you your, view, your views per hour. So we're getting 55 views per hour on this video. Um, our engagement rate, views, and this is content to double down on. Create more content like this for our channel and it should 
help our growth. Also, if we go down, content that could use work, just as important in my opinion, but these are videos that either need new thumbnails, new titles, or maybe we should, shouldn't create content like this anymore. You know, negative research is just as important as the positive research in my opinion, so it's a great place to look here. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to one of our videos. So, yeah. I'm gonna show you how this can be used. So, go to YouTube, we're gonna type in Premiere Pro Masking, and I'll bring up one of our videos. And uh, let's see. So this is one of our videos here. I'm gonna click onto this here. And awesome let me just pause this. This is one of our Premiere Pro masking tutorials. Now what VidIQ does is it has a lot of extra tips here. So let's say you wanna spy on your competition or you wanna find out stats about your own video. VidIQ has this little plugin that just pops in automatically at the side here and it gives you some extra data. So we can see we've got a good score, 82 out of 100, 38 views per hour. The video has had 1.3 million views. Um, we've got 24.2 thousand subscribers from this video. Pretty impressive. Top countries could be good for helping you create new content. The top devices, so where are people watching this? Mobile, tablet, or desktop? Super, super handy. Um, the thumbnail of the video. The socials, so the engagement's good, you know, could be better, it's good. SEO, how this compares in the first 28 days to other videos, an optimization checklist, and the tags that that creator has used. So as I mentioned, you can do this for anyone's video, not just your own, so that's really super handy. But this is where I like to use VideoQ. So let's go to edit this video, let's pretend we are making some changes here. And let's get into the details. It will load up as normal, give it a second or two, and then it will load up the vidIQ strategic elements that I like to use. So the first one here, you can see you've got this blue box under title, the title, and it says get AI title recommendations. Tap that, and if you've got a boring title here or you think you could use some work, press that, and it's gonna give you some AI generated titles. So look at that. This is how it, to easily mask out parts of a video in Premiere Pro. How to mask transitions effectively in Premiere Pro. Different to this title here. So these could work and sometimes do work at increase, increasing our click-through rate, which is a very important metric within YouTube. Next up, we have um, this that I like to use quite a lot. If we had uploaded this video and it wasn't yet published, you can use this section here to see the best time to publish on your channel. Overall, it says the peak time is 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., but you can go through to the day. So let's just say, uh, like today, it's Wednesday today. What time would it be best to post this video if we were posting today? Well, it looks about 3 p.m. is the best time, between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. And you can see it does change, you know, on Thursdays, it's 9 to 11 a.m. And this is when our viewers are on YouTube. If we scroll down, we can compare our thumbnail in the search results. So you can see how your thumbnail compares to other people's videos. Just a great way of improving your thumbnails, making sure they stand out against the competition. You also get a vidIQ SEO score. This helps you make sure you've done your checklist, you've added cards, you've added end screens, you've added play, added the video to playlists, you've made it public, you know, for starters. So this is just a fantastic way of improving your video. And finally, you've got tags. A lot of people really, really overlook tags. You can see here, we've added these tags in, but what vidIQ does now is it gives you a keyword, keyword, I can't say keyword, a keyword score, 49.4 out of 100, so it's a good one. And this one here with the little hash is where we appear on YouTube search results for this hashtag. So if you typed in easy masking in Premiere Pro transitions, we come up number one. We come up number one for this one as well. Number one for this one as well. So this video is doing pretty, pretty well. But if you're stuck here and you can't think of any tags or you're writing in the wrong ones, come to the bottom here and it will give you new ones that you can just tick this plus and you can add those in to your videos and these should help you rank a little bit better. All of these things just, just add the extra 5% here and there to make your video rank better. You know, adding one, adding one key tag is not gonna help you rank number one. But if you get the title right, the thumbnail right, the content right, and the tags right, you're gonna be reaching the top of YouTube in no time.
So really the key here is to think about your channel and the niche that you want to be in first, and then use the data from places like vidIQ to improve your videos or come up with the great concepts that will really work for your channel. Now, if you wanna check out vidIQ, I've actually emailed them. This isn't a sponsored video, but they've sent me a 50% off code. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna check them out. The next thing you should consider is doing a series or a multiple series on your channels in playlists. Now, what I mean by this is, let's just say you're doing a MacBook Pro review on your YouTube channel. What a lot of people will do is they will film that video and then they'll be done with the MacBook Pro content and they'll move on to an iPhone review or some training reviews, something like that. So what you can do is maybe do a MacBook Pro review as video one, video two could be MacBook Pro speed tests, and then video three could be the best new software for your MacBook Pro. And what you'll find is if someone enjoyed video one, they'll end up watching video two and three. It really does work like Netflix. How many times have you put on one episode of something on Netflix and then ended up watching two, three, four, episodes and that can really help your average watch time so check that out think about doing a series on your channel now let's talk about thumbnails when we first launched the channel we just used to use the little thumbnails that YouTube gives you when you upload a video the problem with them is they're completely plain and they tell your viewer nothing about the video at all and you know that saying uh, don't judge a book by its cover. And you know why people say that? It's because everyone judges a book by its cover. So what can you do to improve your thumbnail? Well, you can add a nice, clear, bold title for starters. Something with not too many words, which tells everyone what your video is about, so it really starts to stand out. You can even add little emojis or other little icons to tell your story. Now, I'm pretty lucky here at Editor's Keys because Rob uh, is our designer. He designs a lot of the thumbnails and he's a much better designer than me because I'm absolutely terrible at design. Now, if you're terrible at design, there is a little website that I sometimes use if I'm uploading videos in a hurry, and that website is canva.com. Let me show you that because it's got a great amount of professional looking YouTube thumbnails that you can use and edit for yourself. Now my final tip is probably the most important one. You've done the hard work, you've done the filming, you've got your shot looking right, you've got your video uploaded, the title's looking fantastic, the descriptions are great, the thumbnails pulling in the viewers, and people are starting to watch and comment on your video. Don't ignore them, whatever you do. A big mistake I see all over the place, and we did it to, for a little while and we saw this negatively affect our channel, is if someone is taking the time out to view a video that you've created and they ask a question or leave a comment, reply to every single comment. Not only are you helping the algorithm, but you're building a community of people that are gonna come back time and time again because they're interacting with you. We're all humans, we all wanna interact with real people. So if someone is asking you a question about your video, make sure you leave some love and leave them a reply. This will really help your channel grow. So there we go, they are our top tips for growing your YouTube channel and some of the things that we've done to grow ours, including some of the mistakes we've made. I hope this video has helped you. Let me know if it has in the comment section below.